Hey folks, JR. Back for another episode of Mayhem in the Mid South. This is going to be episode seven Murder on Rose Hill. Now, Rose Hill Cemetery, located on Elvis Presley Boulevard, with the intersection of Rose Hill Road. Now that's just across the street and down from the U.S. Post Office Bulk Mail Center. And it's in South Memphis. Cemetery's been there since 1902. Now that neighborhood where the cemetery's at, it's known as Bunker Hill. Now, I was still riding that precinct. That's the old South Precinct. That ward there was, back in that day, was known as uh, 226's ward. Now, there were two inmates of the state prison system, Tony Carruthers and James Montgomery. Now, right before they were going to be released, they were down at the state prison there in Memphis, just off Sycamore View. And now they were hatching a plan to get back what was owed to them. In fact, Carruthers... 1993, he had written a couple of letters. Carruthers said he had a master plan that was a winner. And he said that his intention was to make the streets pay me. And he said that everything I do from now on will be well organized and extremely violent. It would come to pass he was one out of two on those promises. Now Carruthers, he got out first. And it wasn't too long after that that his partner James Montgomery got out. First order of business for Carruthers and Montgomery, they were going to hit dope dealer named Marcellos Anderson. Marcellos Anderson, always flashing cash, always wearing expensive jewelry. Now, he had two partners on his enterprise, Andre, baby brother Johnson, and another fellow named Terrell Adair. So now this was going to be the first targets of Carruthers and his master plan. They were going to move on Anderson. Now there was word out on the street that Anderson kept a lot of money at his mama's house up in her attic. Mama's name was Delois Anderson. Now one of the Assignments that Carruthers had to do while he was an inmate at the Mark Luttrell Transition Center. Him and some other inmates had to go to a cemetery and kind of clean up and all that. Now, the name of that cemetery was Rose Hill Cemetery on Elvis Presley. He made the comment to some other inmates, the cemetery would be a perfect place to hide a body because nobody would ever think to look there. And if the police didn't have a body, they couldn't get you. So the date's February 24, 1994. Marcelo Sanderson, he's riding around in a white Jeep Cherokee. Now riding with him is this buddy of his, Frederick Tucker. Now, also in the Jeep with them 
are James and Jonathan Montgomery. Around 5 p.m. on the 24th, the Montgomery brothers, Anderson and Tucker, they pull up to a house. Now this house, it's a cousin of theirs, female. So they walk up in the house and the four men, they go down into the basement. A few minutes later, James Montgomery, he comes back upstairs. He tells his cousin that she needs to leave the house for a while because he's got to take care of some business. So Shaw, she uh, gets her kids and there's a fella up in the house, another cousin. So the four kids and the two adults, they leave the house. Female cousin, she comes back to the house a little later by herself and she only saw Carruthers and Montgomery. So Carruthers is there, James is there, but Jonathan's not there. So Montgomery, James, suggests to her that she go pick up her kids and to stay gone a little longer. So she leaves again and then she comes back a little before 10 o'clock. Now she didn't see the Jeep Cherokee anymore. But James Montgomery and Carruthers, they're still up in the house. So Montgomery then tells the cousin, well, go put your kids to bed and stay upstairs until I tell you that we're leaving. So she does what she's asked to do. And a little bit later, Montgomery calls up to her and says, hey, we're leaving. So she comes downstairs because she's a woman and you know she's curious about what's going on. I don't know if I wouldn't have just stayed upstairs for a long time. But anyway, she comes back downstairs. Now she says later that she saw James Montgomery, Carruthers, Anderson, and Tucker. They all leave in the Jeep Cherokee. Now, later on, the cousin would say that Anderson and Tucker's hands were tied behind their backs when they left the house. That story would change when she got into court. Nothing like a little intimidation of a witness. All right, so now it's around 8 o'clock. 8 p.m. on the 24th. And a niece to DeLois Anderson, she calls the house, calls Miss Anderson's house. She said someone picked up the phone, they didn't say anything. So the niece, she hangs the phone up. She called back a couple more times, but she never got an answer. Now, the niece, she's been living over there with Miss Anderson, so she gets over to her aunt's house at around 9 p.m. Now, she couldn't find her aunt anywhere. Miss Anderson's nowhere in the house, but now her purse is still there, car's there, keys are there. She even goes into her aunt's bedroom and it looked like the aunt had been laying up in bed watching TV and eating something but hadn't finished the meal. So the niece, she goes to bed, figuring the aunt will come back home in a little while. 
Now, the last person to actually see Miss Anderson alive was around 7.15 p.m. on the 24th. So about 45 minutes before the niece had called the house and somebody had picked the phone up but not said anything. Now, a schoolmate of uh, the Montgomery's and Carruthers, he said he got a call from Jonathan Montgomery. Jonathan's telling him over the phone that about they got some folks. So this old schoolmate says, what folks? Jonathan says, Cello and them. And he, he says something about we we got two hundred thousand dollars. So then Jonathan he cuts the conversation short. He says he needs to meet with this fella, so they arrange a meet. So Jonathan he comes over to dude's house. And it's around nine p.m. And he's telling dude, he says, we got them folks out at the cemetery on Elvis Presley and we got 200,000. And he says, we had to kill them folks. Now, about this time, James Montgomery calls So the old schoolmate talks to him for a few minutes and gets off the phone. Jonathan, who's been standing there, he asks his old school buddy, goes up, wants to know if he'll drive him over to the cemetery. Well, the schoolmate, he's no fool. He says, no, I don't think I'll do that. He says, but you can borrow him a car. So old Jonathan says that'll be great and he gets the car and says he'll be back in about an hour or so. Now it just so happens that white Jeep Cherokee that Anderson had borrowed and been driving, it turns up in the great state of Mississippi. They recover it around 2.40 a.m. on the 25th of February. And it's been totally destroyed by fire. Now about 3.30 a.m. After the police have notified the owner of the Jeep Cherokee that his vehicle's destroyed. And oh, by the way, it's in another state. That fella, he calls the Lois Anderson's house because now he's wondering where Anderson's at. And he talks to uh, the niece of Miss Anderson. And they get to talking, figure out that Anderson's missing, his mama's missing, and this fella Tucker's missing so the niece she calls the police and files a missing person report now the Montgomery brothers and Carruthers as you might guess they didn't bring their old schoolmate didn't bring his car back till 8.30 the next morning on the 25th of February And the car was very muddy. Now, a few days later, James Montgomery, he comes over to Hines' house. That's the schoolmate. Tells Hines, he says, I know you've been having some trouble with people on the street. Why don't you just take this AK-47 rifle that I got? And then Montgomery mentions, no, by the way, it's got blood on it. 
more in a figurative way of speaking rather than literally. Now the old school made Hines. He would later testify that he took that statement to mean that someone had been shot with that weapon. Now in less than two weeks, in fact on March 3rd, 1994, the bodies of DeLois and Marcellos Anderson and Tucker, they are recovered from the cemetery there on Rose Hill. Now it turns out that the police didn't take them long to figure out who they should start looking at since they had all these witnesses saying, well, yeah, we we saw old Anderson and Tucker. They were riding around in that white Jeep Cherokee and the Montgomery brothers were in there with them. And it didn't take the police long to figure out that Jonathan was, was kind of weak. So Jonathan broke pretty quick and he took the police up there and they excavated a grave and covered the three bodies. Now what they had done is, is they had taken the bodies and there was a grave already dug for a funeral the next day, a graveside service. So they put the bodies down in that hole, put a little dirt over it, put some plywood over top of that. So the next day, a person's buried right on top of them bodies. And if old Jonathan hadn't uh, got feeble, Carruthers would have been right. They wouldn't have got caught. Now, the medical examiner at the time for Shelby County, Dr. O.C. Smith, now he was on scene when they removed the bodies, and he performed the autopsies. Now, he would testify that the body of DeLois Anderson was lying at the bottom of the grave and the bodies of the two male victims were lying on top of her. The hands of all three victims were bound behind their backs. That's just what the cousin said to the police before she changed her mind in court. Frederick Tucker's feet were also bound and his neck showed signs of bruising caused by a ligature. A red sock was found around DeLois Anderson's neck. Now Marcellos Anderson, he didn't have any of his jewelry on. Dr. Smith testified that DeLois Anderson died from asphyxiation caused by several factors the position of her head against her body, dirt in her mouth and nose, and trauma from weight on her body, that being the two male bodies. Frederick Tucker had received a gunshot wound to his chest, which would not have been fatal had he received medical care. Now, Tucker also suffered injuries from blunt trauma to his abdomen, and head resulting in broken ribs, a fractured skull, and a ruptured liver. Now, Dr. Smith, his opinion about Tucker was that he was shot and placed in the grave, and then the force of compression from being buried produced the other injuries, and along with the gunshot wound, caused his death. According to Dr. Smith, Marcelo Sanderson had been shot three times. A contact wound to his forehead that was not severe. And two shots to his neck, one of which was also not serious. Now, Dr. Smith said, though, that wound to the neck, it had entered Anderson's windpipe and severed his spinal cord, paralyzing him from the neck down. The wound would not have been instantaneous to Anderson's death. Anderson had also suffered blood trauma to his abdomen from the compression forces. So Dr. Smith says that the victims were alive when they were buried. 
Now James and Jonathan Montgomery have been arrested. Tony Carruthers has been arrested. And they're waiting to go to trial. And lo and behold, Jonathan Montgomery, one who led the police to the bodies, he's found dead in his cell. He'd hung himself. Or at least that was the official version that he hung himself. He must have been despondent over the killings. Of course, now there's a word around the campfire is is that uh, somebody may have suicided him, that he may have had a little help, which was quite possible. Well, Carruthers is such an arrogant fella that he runs off every attorney that they appoint to defend him so he ends up defending himself so he's pro se he's gonna be his own attorney and of course he does such a good job the jury finds Tony Carruthers and James Montgomery guilty on three counts of first-degree murder, three counts of especially aggravated kidnapping, and one count of especially aggravated robbery, and both men are sentenced to die. And then the worm turns. It's now in 2006, after several appeals, James Montgomery, he gets the appellate court to agree with him that his trial should have been separate from Tony Carruthers because Carruthers was such an idiot defending himself that it drug him down with him. So the appellate court said, well, you know what, you're right. So they order the, order the state of Tennessee and Shelby County Tell them you got to give old James Montgomery a new trial. Well, of course, now it's been 12 years, so it may be a little tough finding evidence and finding witnesses and trying to redo the trial. So they just cut him a deal. And he pleads guilty to second degree murder, time served, and James Montgomery is released. 2006. Parts unknown. Now, Carruthers, he's still sitting on death row. In fact, uh, they're supposed to be scheduling a new death date for him in 2022, so they say. We shall see.